All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. This is your host, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I'm joined with... Brian Saber, Captain Cleveland, Browns, Cavs, Guardians, All-Star Edition Guardians, C-L-E till I die. Hmm. And most importantly, friend of the show, Greensboro native, one of our favorite guests and amazing actor, Michael Torek. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, you're too kind. You're too kind. I'll take the amazing actor because it helps me, you know, sort of get over my imposter syndrome. So uh, <laughs> you better, you better thank stop you. it. You know, you, you know you're going to get the air horns on that. You are an amazing. I'll actor. take it. Come All on. Right. I'll take Come it. On thank on you. Now. Thank you very much. So today we wanted to cover obviously what's going on in the world uh you know first and foremost we do want to make this known we are in and have been in complete support of the actors and writers strike absolutely plain and simple so we want to let that known out there um what they're looking for what they're asking for in our opinion and for everyone else that has common sense should be their opinion is not too much to ask for so we wanted to bring in someone like friend of the show, Michael Torek, to really help explain more of the writer and actor strike, sag after and the writers. And then, of course, we're going to talk about his his short film that he's been working on here in the triad as well. So, you know, just kind of kicking things off. What was when when you got the message, you know, how did this happen? Like, was it your agent? Was it your manager? Were they just like, hey. You know, this is this is going to happen. You know, the, the writer's already been on strike. We're getting ready to go on strike. Like, give us a little bit about how the initial process came for SAG-AFTRA. Uh, absolutely. You know, well, SAG, it actually came through SAG-AFTRA. Okay. And so the contracts that SAG-AFTRA, you know, as our union, as a laborer, the contracts that they negotiate, like all contracts, have an end date. And the end date for this contract, I believe, was June 30th. And so they already knew in advance that they were going to the table with AMPTP, the uh, American Television Producers. I don't even know what it stands for. I just know that it's AMPTP. So forgive me. Uh, um, but uh, so they already knew they had to go to the table to negotiate a new contract. Well, based on how poorly the negotiations went with the Writers Guild, they went ahead and reached out to all of its current standing members to authorize a vote. They, to authorize a strike. So even before they went to the table, they reached out to us via email, via postcards, uh, in different ways, social media, and just said, hey, go online. Uh, if you approve of this, here's what we're fighting for. Uh, so let us know that if the, if the start of negotiations don't go well, we already have your approval to strike. Uh, and there was I don't remember what the overall turnout was, but what the overall turnout was of those of us that voted, 98% of the people that voted voted to strike if need be, right? So, sure. so there was an authorization. So then on July the 1st, we go to contract negotiations, which uh, they were supposed to have a new contract signed by the middle of July. Negotiations didn't go well. They stepped away. They tried to come back. Nobody could come to terms. So because we had already authorized, they were like, great, we strike and everybody walked off set and production shut down. So I, yeah, that's kind of how it started. There were conversations that I had had with my agents uh, and my manager in regards to, hey, let's be prepared for this. But, mm -hmm. you know, for me as just a struggling working actor, I, I live my life one audition at a time. Sure. Right. And if I go you know, more than a month without an audition, that's when I get on the phone and be like, hey, what's going on? And they're like, hey, nothing. <laughs> and so. Any idea, and, and you know, you're not a mind reader, right? But what what's the motivation of the 2% that didn't want to strike? What do you think that, what do you think the thought process is there? Just to kind of get a sense of the other side, right? Oh, you know, I don't know, to be honest with yeah. you. Okay. I, I know that for myself, I debated this idea of, well, why are we striking? And so I looked at what the current deal was, and I looked at what the new deal was going to be. And, you know, all I could say was, is that maybe the 2% that didn't vote or the 2% that said no, uh, actually, the 2% that said no, we're just thinking, look, I don't, I, I don't work enough as it is. Sure. So I don't want to not work because I feel greedy. Right. Yeah. Um, 
And and that's the thing with that is that just, you know, this this goes beyond greed. This is more about fair pay and fair, fair, fair wages. Mm-hmm. So maybe, but I, I, you know, because sure. everybody that I talk to and my circle of friends and everything that I saw on social media with the actors that I've met over my decades of being in this business, we're all like, vote yes, vote yes. Okay. So yeah. makes sense. Now with, with everything going on and you made a good point, but before we started this episode, you know, there is a gigantic misconception just because you've been on an episode or a season or whatnot that you're a millionaire. So I would love to you for right. you to speak to that because that's obviously not the case. Like just because friends went on for 10 seasons and those six friends, you know, made a million dollars plus at the end of the, you know, the season and this, that, and the other, that's obviously not the case for everybody. Right. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll start this answer with this sort of anecdote that, uh, so I also teach Mm -hmm. my, I I like, I tell people that my side hustle as an actor is teaching. So hopefully the universities that I work for, maybe don't watch your podcast because they're going to think I take my acting career more seriously than everybody watches our podcast. (laughs) No, everybody should watch your podcast and listen to your podcast. Uh, but I tell, you know, anytime I meet a new actor, or a young actor or an aspiring actor, whatever it might be, I, I give them a number and I compare it to the NFL, right? Okay. If you think about the NFL and the number of teams in the NFL and the number of, of players that they roster at the start of a season, right? Yeah. So if you do that math, it's what? It's 53 players times 32 teams and yep. you do that math, right? Okay, well now go and look at all of the Division One NCAA schools and the number of players that they roster. Sure. And then let's look at that number divided by the number of players that get drafted. Mm -hmm. Then let's look at the number of players that actually get drafted that then make the final roster. So when you crunch all those numbers together, you're looking at 0.03% of Division I NCAA football players that get a chance to play in the NFL. Right. Right. That 0.03% is equivalent to the first two rows at the Oscars. Right? SAG-AFTRA has over 160,000 members. At any given time throughout the year, only 3% of our union is working. as a, And making that their normal full income of living, right? 3 wow. to 5%. Wow. So the other 95% have teaching jobs and bartending jobs and do podcasts and do web design and take headshot photography, but they're still driven by their art and their craft. Right. So that's the first thing that sort of the everyday society should understand is that there is this sort of romanticism to this job that the non-actor sort of looks at and sees. So they see, they meet someone like me and go, Oh my God, you were on season one of Ozark you're amazing. You're a star. And I'm like, no, I'm just a guy with two kids trying to struggle and work. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And that Greensboro, North Carolina, long, long spent, long been spent. And then the other thing that I tell you is this, and we can even equate this in a big number or a small number. And this is all public information. So I don't mind throwing these numbers out there, but uh, for example, a one day co-star, right? I get a job early out in my career on a television show and I have five to 10 lines in one scene and I'm working one scene for one day that pays $900. Now that's for one day. That's a lot of money, but there are 364 other days out of the year that I got to work. Yeah. So, Oh no, I froze my internet. Can you still hear me? Oh, yeah, there I'm. Yeah, we got you. You're back. Sorry. We're Sorry. We'll edit that in post. We'll, we'll edit that in post. Um, So, but that's $900 before taxes. Yeah. Right. So now I have to take 33% of that for taxes. I have to take another 10% of that and pay my agent before taxes. So my agent gets a straight 90 bucks. So now I'm down to 800. We'll round down to make the math easier. My manager gets 10%. So now we're down to 700. Take away another 300 for taxes. Now we're down to 400. Mm -hmm. So for 16 hours of work, I got paid $400. Do that math. That's 20 bucks an hour ish, which is not a bad day's work, sure. but it's one day. Yeah. Right. Now you add on to that. If it's not part of my contract, I may have to pay for my own gas to get to 
the city where it's shooting. I may have to pay for my own hotel room. I have to pay, may have to pay for my own food while I'm there. So it is a job that although fully romanticized, even by myself, that the sooner you can figure out that this is a job and that these people are here to work and to try to make a living, the easier it is, right? Yeah. Uh, To understand that, oh, okay, these aren't just a bunch of greedy, you know, uh, divas. These aren't just a bunch of greedy narcissists saying, oh, we want more money. We want more money. Uh, These are people that are care about what they do. They've trained hard for what they do. It's an art. It's a craft. It's like anything. And and we just feel that we should be compensated in a way that reflects the work and the effort that we put in. And and rightfully so. And I think I think a, a good segue here. Um, you know, we do want to kind of get to the AI thing and some of the, you know, thoughts and misconceptions and all that around AI, but just to put it in perspective, I saw on probably Twitter, cause I get a lot of my news from Twitter the other day that Netflix was hiring an AI engineer for $900,000 a year. <laughs> So they're hiring an AI engineer for $900,000 a year. And the actors working on the show make $400 a day after taxes. Well, after and taxes. I, yeah. sure, exactly. But the point is, right. The, the math ain't math in there, right? Like there, there is no way before taxes, after taxes, whatever, for you to do a, an eight, 10, 12 arc, uh, episode arc on a show to make the kind of money that that engineer does. So I, I just, I want to segue into the AI thing because that's a, a major talking point of this whole thing and mm-hmm. put it in perspective pre-transition that that person that does the AI engineering for Netflix, Netflix alone is getting paid $900,000 a year. Right. Yeah. I wish that I would, if I could, I'd go back to school and I'd get a computer degree in artificial intelligence and, and uh, graphics and things. So like talk that. a little bit about the AI thing, you know, your feelings on it, some of the things that you've heard that maybe aren't true, the impact that AI is having on acting and maybe some positives and negatives of artificial intelligence in, in acting. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, I, I have only recently started to learn about the AI capabilities that are going on visually, right? Uh, orally and and obviously in written text that I've understood a little bit more um, but I, I didn't really start to learn it and it didn't really hit me how how big a deal it was until you know I can't remember if the last time we talked uh, if I was working on or had finished working on but I, I did a big Amazon movie over Christmas last year and through January huge budget like action adventure Christmas movie uh stunts all you know huge names hopefully it comes out at christmas time because it should be fun i believe it involves Uh, santa claus and there is a santa claus yes yes. Yes. uh Uh, i don't play santa claus but uh but anyway my point of that is is that you know i played a group of guys we were all mercenaries so there were eight of us they cast four stunt guys they cast four actors but they had the actors do some of their own stunts well long story short too late uh, there was a digital trailer where we walked into this trailer and it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen, right? So as just a lover of cinema and storytelling, I was just, I was overcome by the romanticism of it. I was like, this is so cool. They put us on a platform, it elevated us up. We were surrounded by over 300 high definition cameras and they took a picture. And that was it. 10 seconds, 10 seconds. I got paid for a full day's work to go in and get a digital image created of me for 10 seconds. And I was like, okay, well, what's this for? And they said, oh, well, if there's the stunt or something that doesn't go well, or we want to blow you up or launch you out of the back of Santa's sleigh and have you tumble down the Andes mountains or whatever it is, obviously we're not going to do that to you in real life. So we're just going to take a digital image of yourself and, and recreate it on the screen and do all the cool stuff with you. That way we can protect you and your safety. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Right. And then I went on about my day and did another two or three weeks on the movie and kept working and didn't think anything of it. Yeah. And then this strike comes around and I go, holy cow. And then I started to think about Carrie Fisher and the last few Star Wars movies, right? And all of these actors where they're, that are no longer with us, God rest their souls, that they could be like, I'm just going to 
put them in the scene. And then I was looking at a post on Instagram uh, that uh, Justine Bateman is is really fighting for the Writers Guild. Um, and she had a, a post, a little story on Instagram where she they showed an interview and I don't it was some, you know, talk show interview. And it was a woman literally as cavalier as you could imagine talking about, well, you know, here's the benefit of AI. Just think that if, you know, say a show like a succession and but, but you really want to see more of the story, you could just go into your own Oculus and tell it. Tell, show me another scene with these people and it would just show it to you digitally. And I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. That's crazy. And so now there's this concern, right? That from my understanding, producers, it's like, for example, AI could potentially get rid of the need for any background actors. Right. Because I could, we could literally bring you into the studio like they did with me as a, as a cast member of this movie yeah. They could pay you X amount of dollars, bring you into the studio, take your picture, and then just pluck you in as an extra anywhere in the movie that they wanted, right? Now, extras make squat as it is. right? But what the studios want is they want to be able to take a picture of your likeness, pay you one time for it, and then use it forever. Of course. Right? And the actors are like, nope, can't do that. We need our protection from that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's where it gets a little scary, Right. Is that the, the digital quality of artificial intelligence is getting so good that they could, you know, just film an actor in front of any green screen or in front of any big blue screen and put you anywhere in the world. And you'd never know. Like it's 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 just a, it's gone so much farther than than green screen. Right. And so. Uh, yeah, did, I don't know, Ryan. I got off on a tangent. Did I answer? No, that, that's that's what we're that's what we're yeah. talking about here. Like, I think people that don't do it day in and day out think, oh, well, what's the big deal? There's a little AI in there, right? Then they don't kind of understand the long term impact, right, that it right. has on the every the yeah. everyday actor. Well, and I think if like anything, right? So look, here's my understanding, and and we talked a little bit about this before, like the actual official recording started, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the act were concerned with this factor this idea that you could pay me x amount of dollars and use my likeness forever right right so even if the studios proceed to do that now without permission there's no way that stands up in court and so whereas i support the actors and their need for some protection and some proper language that's what we need to get to right we need to get to a defining language that says okay great if you're gonna use my likeness and take my likeness and do this thing that's great. You can pay me a one a fee for that likeness, but every time you use that likeness, you have to continue to pay me. That one time fee does not give you perpetuity over my face for the rest of your production career for shows. And so that's where the that's really where the gray area and the arguments come in is that the producers want to do it one time, pay you one time, and the actors like, no, we need protection from that. So I think hopefully once egos calm down that people will go back to the table and they'll be able to agree on some sort of viable language and also think about like college kids right like the ones that go and give blood and plasma and all that for money to go out to drink you could be 18 years old freshman in college and go you know what i read something on the internet that they're going to pay me 500 dollars to go stand in front of a green screen take my picture whatever let's go make 500 bucks we can drink for for the rest of the month on that right yeah and then all of a sudden this person wants to become an actor right they decide they want to become an actor and they've already sold their rights away early on in their life right and that becomes a a, a whole situation so i and i can see that very very easily playing out so that's interesting anyway sorry well, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up because I will tell you, too, that one of the concerns right now, and this is a conversation that I've had with several colleagues, uh, and they're colleagues that are just, they're amazing actors, and they've worked for years, and they've got credits, you know, under their name, and they're really good at what they do, that there's, again, in this idea of how acting is a very romantic industry and a romantic business, that there are those that are out there right now going, I want to be famous, right mm -hmm. social media has increased the level of the need to be famous right with followers and likes and and things of that nature that it's starting to spill over into the acting world ryan feels attacked so, right now. yeah right the hell up. there are a handful of people that approach acting in the same way 
and they just want to get discovered and and go, but they don't have the skills. They don't have the craft. They don't understand the tools or the tricks to the trade and you'll learn it eventually. But the scare of the concern is now that there's a scare or a concern that uh, with people crossing the lines, right? That there's the actor that's not a member of the union right. that really wants to be a star in this show. And that if it continues, if this strike continues, that the producers are going to start to reach out to those people to cross the lines. And, you know, all we can hope for is just to say, don't. Just don't stand yeah, with yeah. us because you're gonna you're only gonna hurt yourself in the long run. That's well, it's like when any when any sports league strikes, man. Like the owners are just the owners are just like, look, these guys have spent their money before they even make it. Like we're just gonna wait them out, right? And you've seen that. You've see, I don't know who it was came out and said basically that they're prepared to. It was Bob Iger, right? The head of Disney came out and said, look, we're gonna wait these guys out till they start losing their houses. Right. And that that's the that's the owners that's the owners mentality in the professional sports league. So it's not surprising that I saw that. One other thing I saw today, actually, General Hospital of all things, right? One of the writers. Did you see this? One oh, of the writers. Man. One of the writers on General Hospital uh, was doing an interview, and I have no idea how this showed up on my feed. I don't, you know, don't at me. I don't, I don't know. But well, I'm, um, I'm going to come at you after this episode's over. The 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 head showrunners of General Hospital are going to hire like fill in writers to write the show just to kind of keep on because you know how that you know how soap operas are those storylines go on for months and sometimes years at a time so i think mm -hmm. they're playing the long game here and they're saying all right look we'll have some shitty right not that soap opera writing is, is great anyways but we'll have some shitty writing here for you know a couple weeks or a couple months or whatever and then they'll come back in you know is it that that's kind of the same thing that you're talking about, right? Like the lower level actor crossing the line is an opportunity to maybe get into a role or a position that they would not normally get. Um, you know, that's, that's a real thing, right? Like that's, that's you a know, real, that's how this, that's how the house crumbles, right? It can be. And it would be how the house crumbles. If it happens, I'm going to believe that it won't happen. And I'm going to believe that, you know, the voice of the union and the voice of those of us actors that are strong union members and, and dedicated lifelong working actors can get enough, you know, word out there to say, hey, don't trust us when we tell you don't trust us when we tell you that you're just being used. Trust us when yeah. we tell you. And I'm not saying that I don't want it to feel like that everybody right out there is going to go out there now and try to become an actor because we're choosing not to work. Right. You're still going to have to have a little talent and a little bit of skill uh, to be able to even be seen or considered for a show. They're not just going to start. They're not going to go to the street and start pulling people off the streets uh, for things. But uh, I, I would like to think that we're not far enough along into our strike yet for sure. that to be a real, real concern. I just know, like I'd said, it's a conversation that we've had. Um, and But the union has been really good and really strong about telling non-union members, hey, here's how you can support us. And one of the ways is to stand with us, to not cross the line. Uh, don't don't get don't get drawn in by the carrot, right? Yeah. Um, because that carrot's going to just go away eventually, and you're going to end up being in the same boat that we are. Yeah, and then uh, you'll be then you'll be. Like an you obstacle. said, if you ever wanted to be an actor and a member of the union, and you cross that line, the it union will hire you. The union won't, happen. They won't mm -hmm. take you in. So. All yeah, right, it's interesting. Two well, one question, and then I'd love to get your to your short film here. Do you think this this is the next step for Skynet when it comes to Terminator? <laughs> Do you think this is it? Like this is how AI starts? It may not be how it started in the Terminator, but you know, I mean, obviously, I'm having some fun with this question. But hundred percent, right? I tell you what, man, we all we all joke about there's that thing that's gonna you know that the right. robots are gonna take over. Right. And, you know, I think the better question is, is what's going to come first, the zombie apocalypse or the Skynet? Right. I mean, I think we all thought that at some point there was going to be zombies coming from a COVID vaccine and that never right. happened. So I'm hoping that uh, it hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. You know, I, I just really I hope that uh, 
I, I just read today before jumping on here that the, the division of labor uh, supervisors in LA mm. came out and publicly said, basically said, Hey, producers, let's get back to the table. We stand in support of, of the actors and y'all need to sort of suck it up and get back to the table. Yeah. Um, and so I hope eventually that they do, you know, it's funny, Ryan, you mentioned earlier in our chat that, and I mean, and it wasn't just the, I can't remember what CEO you said, but we're just going to wait them on until they can no longer Bob pay. Iger. Yeah, they yeah, from Disney. Until we can no longer pay our rent. Well, we could never pay our rent, right? right. And after, <laughs> we've never been able to pay our rent to begin with from acting. So you can wait as long as you want. I'll go do my side hustle to pay my rent until sure. I can be or start selling my baseball cards or whatever I have to do. So uh yeah i you know we'll see what happens gotcha brother and then there were there was one really good point made i was i was watching a, a news outlet the other day and they were like well you know we haven't seen a lot of the a-listers in the front lines and a lot of their managers and publicists came out and and they they said they said well it, it seems hypocritical if, if brad pitt comes out there and says we don't get paid enough or george clooney when really this strike is more well, about everybody else even though they yes. support it obviously but it seems like if you would have a brad pitt out there who makes 10 15 20 million a movie when he's talking about we don't get paid enough it, it takes away from the actual agreed you know 100 I mean? and i don't need brad pitt out there you know why because <laughs> partly because brad pitt also i mean that's plan b yeah. plan b productions is brad pitt right and so he can't be out right. there Technically, right. it's a conflict of interest, right? He's for on him. both so sides, right? Yeah. I don't fault him for that. I don't fault Jason Bateman for right. not being on the line with because he's got aggregate films. I don't fault Ben Affleck right. for not being on the line. Matt Damon, however, has been very public on Instagram yeah. and said, support the actors, right? So there are enough people out there yeah. that are doing the thing and what they need to do to give their support through, you know, announcements and tweets and Instagrams that. Plus, look, due respect, it's hot. Yeah. It's hot. It's just hot on those big <laughs> lines right now. So they just uh they canceled, they just canceled two two picket events the other day, today and or the coming up because of just the record heat in New York. And so it 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 is uh and it's okay. I don't I don't mind. Yeah. They have, I know they have my back and they'll they'll be there when they need to. So that's right. Yep. Tell us, tell us about uh, you know off off camera, off the interview. You and I have been texting. We met up for lunch not too long ago. Mm -hmm. You just wrapped up a, a little short film. You know, let us know what's going on with this. Oh, it's not wrapped up. We're in pre production. Oh. We're oh, just now starting. Okay. Yeah. No. 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 It's great. Yeah. It is. Uh, it. Uh, so as far as I know, I get to continue forward with this project because uh, it's working under one of the contracts that SAG has approved uh because it's a crazy low budget but it is a it's a short field called 8 a.m uh it, and you can find it on instagram newly fresh on instagram 8 a.m the film uh so give me some follows but we are in like the early stages man pre-production i've got an amazing director uh by the name of thomas mendolia who is a greensboro native or, or north carolina native I've got a, a wonderful, brilliant cinematographer, director of photography, Harvey Robinson with Monkey Whale Productions, who is a Greensboro local. Nice. Uh, you know, it's interesting. This is a movie that I wrote, the very first draft, I hate to say it, 15 years ago. Hey, we all got to start. Uh, with Come on. And it was, it was all inspired by the poetry of my best friend in the world, right? The guy was my best friend growing up. He was the best man of my wedding. Uh, he's an amazing poet, an amazing artist, uh, photographer, poet, uh, woodworker. There it is, 8 a.m., by, written by Michael Turek. Follow it. I couldn't decide if the dot was necessary for just semantic, you know, uh, aesthetic look. <laughs> that's so the artist. Playing. That's the artist in you. That's right. I kept playing that's with right. the no dot. I kept with a dash, and I, the dot I may like go it. away, but 8 a.m., the film is on Instagram. Go follow Love it. it. Uh, but you know, my buddy was, you know, we grew up as actors. We grew up in our local choir. We, we acted together. We, we both went our separate ways. We stayed, he's a, like I said, the best man at my wedding. Uh, and he sort of lost sight of his artistry because of the responsibilities of daily life. 
um, and it sort of fell away from him. And in, and in it falling away, he sort of lost a piece of himself. And then something happened in his life, which brought him back to his poetry. And he started writing poetry and I would read it. And he would send it to me and he had a blog for a while and blah, blah, blah. Well, anyway, there were three very specific poems that I read and I was like, oh, I love this guy's story. I want to write this guy's story into a movie. Yeah. Uh, and so I wrote this short film and since, you know, in the last 15 years, it's gone through several changes. It's been in the hands of several people. Uh, a couple of years back, we actually started a pre-production process for it, but I, I do respect as much as I love the two guys that I was working with, we weren't the right fit together as a collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I pulled the plug and then I sat on it and then I finally reached out to a couple of the guys that I, like I said, that I really, really trust their artistry. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to do it, right? We're going to do it. So for whatever reason, I've thrown away my fear. I've thrown away my, uh, my, my, uh, my imposter syndrome and, and I'm going to make this movie. Right. So, so, so that's, so anyway, uh, it's about a guy who loses sight of his artistry, goes to work in a factory just to support his family. And then, through through life actually continuing to not go the way he plans he's brought back to his artistry and becomes even closer with his family is it right? set in is it set in greensboro well it, in, yes sure. <laughs> i mean if it helps me with my fundraising and location scouting no we're going to shoot it here in greensboro right. it was originally set in sort of a midwest kind of industrial film but we were able to give it sort of still that that tactile uh, you know, uh, not tactile, uh, textiles, not tactile, sure. the textile industry, right? I mean, look, every region lost jobs due to NAFTA and recessions and yeah. markets crashing and closing, right? And so I think it's really an every man story. And so whereas it's, 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 whereas it's not specifically set in Greensboro, we have a really great, the director has a really great plan of going out and picking up those very specific sort of shots of the area that sort of specify this location, right. That give it that really sort of North Carolina feel that triad Piedmont triad feel. Yeah. So that'll be as much of the part of the story as just Lutz's journey. So love it. Love it. Love it. If you need yeah. Lutz I'm going to from, from out of town from Cleveland. That's very grumpy in a shitty attitude. I mean, Sabah is your guy. So there you go. Oh, great. Yeah, I got, well, you know, it's funny because I was just, before we come on, I was just texting with, uh, with Chris Flathers. Um, oh, you're going to oh put, Lord. you're going to put that movie to do well, right? What do you need? You, well, need, no, listen, you need, you need a bozo, it. you need a bozo, the clown impersonator. <laughs> I tell you, but here's the thing, as much as one of the reasons why, you know, you guys have always been such a big supporter of mine. And so it's yeah. Chris, Chris has been a big supporter of mine that he's yeah. always out there. Like, I can't share this. I can't share this. Let me share this. Yeah. Uh, he's like, is this my big break? And I said, yeah, man, I got, here's this, I've got a day. There's a day where you can stand in line as an extra. I didn't awesome. tell him that he'll know it now. Love it. But, uh, uh, Love it. We just mean, I, I do have to credit Chris Blathers because that's how I, we got into yeah. it. It really is. I remember telling Ryan, hundred percent. you know, you were, I, I don't know how this happened, but in our many years of being in Greensboro. And I think at this point too, we weren't really hanging out on Walker street that much. You know, because he was like, have you watched Ozark? And I mean, I've, I've probably said this right. story every single episode, so I don't even want to get back into it. But when I was like, yeah, yeah, love him, love him. So I do have to give Chris Rathers credit, credit is due. Give so, him all the credit. Yeah. I'm so not, I, uh, I'm not yeah, giving him any I was going to say, same as not, but I will. <laughs> I love so you, buddy. I, we're all, we're all friends here. It's all busted. 100%. <laughs> So I'm producing this film and it's my first time ever really producing a project. And so I'm just trying to figure it out as I go day by day. And the other yeah. day I was like, well, I should create uh, in some social media presence yep. and get the bus going. Cause in a yeah. couple of weeks, uh, probably in, I'm hoping by mid August, we will launch our crowdsourcing, our crowdfunding campaign, right. To raise the money that we need to raise yeah. uh, to shoot this film uh, we're slated to shoot uh, the week of December 11th because it does take place in sort of the barren winter okay. uh, months, even though with, you know, what did I read the other day that Miami Beach was 120 degrees? Yeah. The water, I don't, so know, I don't, I don't know, know how many barren winter months we have. I don't know if there's any barren all. winter months in North Carolina <laughs> anymore, but. Uh, well, when, when, when you put that link out there, let us know and I'll have, yeah. we'll have our social media manager uh, post that. 
I if will. If you want yeah, it to snow, I'm... that'll be the day you bring Chris Lathers on. I promise you. Yes. It'll be torrential downpour and just hail and everything else. I love it. <laughs> so, Michael, quick question. So you wrote it. You're producing it. Huh? Are you acting? Are you the lead? I am the lead. Yes. Good. Yes. That's awesome. Well, I, I mean, it, it's 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 your passion project, yeah. right? So you should be. And well, I, I just I I just I wanted to be clear on that. I, I didn't. I don't think you actually said that you were the act the lead in it. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't assume anything. Uh, no, it's a safe assumption. But I will tell you that uh, originally I wrote it for somebody else, and uh, and everybody involved were like, "Well, why didn't you write this guy for yourself?" And I was like, "Because I just didn't see him as myself." But I knew this up and coming actor who's huge and he's amazing and he's brilliant. And I was like, "And we're friends." And I'm like, "I want to give him this opportunity to showcase his talent." Well, now he's long since surpassed my little movie. Uh, and I thought, and somebody that I trust in this industry said, you know, you really could play this guy and you really should play this guy. And so for me as an actor, uh, I'm going to use it as an opportunity to play the parts that I don't get a chance to audition for a lot. Right. I play a lot of bad guys. I play a lot of mean guys. Uh, I don't get a chance to play a lot of loving, you know, uh, hardworking blue collar dads. This yeah. could be your Rocky. This is my Rocky. You and know, like oh, Stallone Rocky. was like, no, fuck you. I'm acting in this. I'm yeah. not, you're not making it until so, you let me act it. Let's yeah. go, baby. Let's yep. go. Right. So, yes. So I don't like to use, I, I mean, yes, I will be starring in this film, but I don't like to say that because then it makes me feel narcissistic. We like, we understand and we yeah, appreciate it. You're so that. incredibly humble and, and believe me, we get it. And please, anything that we can do to help, like just like Ryan. Oh, thanks. We are we are all on board. Yeah, we'll so. we'll 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 send stuff out. You know, via our socials. Um, you know, we're getting. I don't know, Brian. I don't know if you want to do the stats or whatever, but we've got a little bit of a global reach at this point. You know, we'll we'll get the message out there for you, man. We 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 appreciate everything that you do. We appreciate the time that you give us. So it's it's the least we can do. Well, I appreciate that. I just don't like coming and hanging out with you guys and oh, talking. We love it. So. We love it. So I, I was talking to Ryan about this, and I would love for you to be the first person to give us your take. So every year, normally Ryan and I have like an obscure fantasy draft. We've done okay. everything from like a zombie apocalypse draft to where you draft people from like Rambo, Stallone and everything, you know, Schwarzenegger, whatever. Uh, we've done one for uh, uh, football players in movies. So I think this year we're actually going to do one based on fast food, primarily okay. breakfast foods, I think. Okay. Right? Well, I, I thought you said that we were going to say, okay, fast food, you got to pick, you got to pick a burger, you got to pick yeah. a chicken sandwich, yeah. you got to pick a, a breakfast food and... Yes and something else what like did you shake, say or like a shake or a smoothie like so a, so like the dessert yeah so there you go so yeah. so the the burger the the chicken dish the breakfast dish and the dessert you gotta just pick one just from more, just fast food favorite yeah fast food places i mean take your time i can edit this in postmas i know we're just putting you on the spot but we're not going to record this for a few weeks we could probably have you back on for it which will be even great because it'll be us three and then our good buddy luke crocker big shout out to luke He's been on a lot of the uh, fantasy drafts for us, but I think this will be the first time we've actually done it. Love that. Time. So just the, like, so not like almost like the Mount Rushmore of, but the, what, yeah, would, be, what right. would be my first draft pick? My first, if I had the one one in a yeah, fantasy yeah. draft for those four things, yep. what do I go with? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, just shooting off the cup with very little time. My one Oh one for dessert has got to be insert any blizzard here. Okay. <laughs> Dairy Queen Blizzard. I'm going All with right. Dairy Queen Blizzard. Uh, I like how you know, started I with a dessert with, first. Yeah. I got to say, that's a bold move. I yeah. like how you dessert started first, with right? dessert first. Now, I'm sure that you diehard Southerners or you people, you long and long time Southern transplants are going to say no cookout. Cookout Shit. shakes, right? Like I'm from Cleveland and I rep Cleveland harder than anybody in the world. I will take a fucking cookout shake over a, a Blizzard any day of the week. Sure. But yeah. I haven't, I'll be honest with you. I don't eat a lot of cookout. Yeah, <laughs> I, the only reason I go there is for the shakes. It ain't for, sure shakes. Ain't for the fucking now, cookout trays. I'll tell you that. To, to rep my Midwest, uh -huh. right? my Midwest. Uh, I don't know if you know, but there's a uh, there's a, a fast food franchise that is only in Nebraska called Runza. Never heard of it. Never and heard of they it. have the 100 best hamburgers. 
in the country. How do you spell okay. that, Michael? Are you R U N Z A? I'm okay. checking it out. Runza. They, they also do what's called a runza, which is basically like a German hot pocket. It's a soft yeast roll stuffed with beef, cabbage, and onions. Wow. You had and me at a German hot pocket. It's amazing. It's amazing. So I'm going you with had me at yeast roll. <laughs> yeah. I'm going with uh with runza as my 101 burger. Okay. Oh, uh, Chicken sandwich, I'm gonna have to pass and come back to that one. Okay. I'll see if it's fast food. Was and that it? In your, in oh. your in your side. Yeah. Breakfast. breakfast side. Oh, breakfast. Yeah, so breakfast, not side. Breakfast item. Breakfast. Oh man. I mean, just the other day I made comment about the sausage egg and cheese McMuffin. So Bro, yeah. Come on. Man. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that one. I'm gonna tell you, listen, there's there's a lot of good breakfast foods at at fast food restaurants. What sets McDonald's apart, hands down, without a doubt, best sausage. Their sausage has just a different, it just hits different than any other meat from any other place. So I can appreciate that. That's, 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 that's a strong, strong list. We That's need your chicken. More. We need your chicken. What are you doing? I need my chicken. Well, I'm not going to cliche and just say Chick Fil A. Uh, right. I mean, That's well, that's the 101, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is it? Are you, you going to watch Chick Fil A's? Your 101 the first, in the first round. <laughs> Chick Fil A. The Chick Fil A sandwich is 10 yeah. is 101. Yeah. Like that is the. the that's yeah. the goat. That's the goat fast food yeah. sandwich. I think right. Yeah. I think that's the the first pick in the first round of any fast food draft is the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. I mean, you know, you got some people yeah. out there that we'll are crazy. We'll put it up to a poll. We will put we it up will. to a poll. You can. I, you know, I hear Popeye's had a pretty good. Popeye's is good, man. Love it. Chicken love sandwich, it. but Chick-fil-A is the 101. Shout out. They're building a Popeye's on West Market. And every time oh, we nice. try, we, Brian will give, we'll be, we go out on Friday nights and me and Courtney a live stream from there. <laughs> we'll be in the back seat. And every time we're going to our, to my house, they're going to drop us off. We remember because we're, you know, in the cups a little bit. We remember that they're building a Popeye's and Courtney and I are in the back seat high five. And we're like, right. Popeye's Woo. Popeye's Popeye's is good, man. Because, you know, and I think it's interesting, though, because you're going to get different answers if you bring in different people from across the country, right? Because anybody oh, the idea. is going to tell you yeah. in and out, hands down, in and mm-hmm. out. Uh, there's, you know, guys from Pittsburgh. I got buddies from Pittsburgh that'll talk about their places in Pittsburgh, their yeah. local joints and things of that nature. The guys from Akron, Luke's going to talk about Swenson's. Oh, it's yeah. A, it's, a, it's a drive-in in Akron that's kind of a cult thing, mm-hmm. you know, I you know, and um, um. Pittsburgh, you know, they got their their paninis or whatever. Those sandwiches right. they put French fries on, they got all that. So anyway, yeah, I agree with you. Different places will give you different. Awesome. You know, you go down into the south, you got like Whataburger in Texas. Oh, they love that shit. Yeah. Um, you know, you know how it is. That's yeah. Gonna yeah. That's gonna be hundred percent. Well, you know, and I, I we Brian, when we I don't think this is when we went to lunch, but there was another time when I, I threw out at you uh the Mount Rushmore of villains. Mm. Yes. We right. did that. We didn't we? do that. Well, we did, did one that episode one? where we just did favorite villains, but Michael and I were talking about, you know, especially, I mean, let's just face it. We're already in August. Halloween's going to be here. No, time. Halloween's right around the corner. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, look at that. I opened right to it. Right to it. Yeah. <laughs> so doing uh, like a uh, Mount Rush. That's the thing. A Mount Rushmore villains. Cause we just did a, just kind of a favorite villains episode. Sure. I definitely think we need to uh. do Mount Rushmore. Villains. Well, and I think the trouble with that though is, is that I think you have to divide it up into genres. You yeah, do. You do. There's so many good villains. Cause you could fill Mount Rushmore with, Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers, Jason. and Jason Oh, my God. There's three right out of the gate. Yo, you back. ready? All... You ready for my list, Michael? You got your honorable, list? Yes. honorable mentions. Norman Stansfield, Gary Oldman from The Professional. Everyone! <laughs> uh, Hans Landa, Christoph Waltz from Inglorious Bastards, Frank Costello, Jack Nicholson from The Departed, and, you know, Calvin Candy, Leo from Django that's that's my list and i threw a little biff tan in in there just yeah, for so we, we oh, did like more it. just like not horror villains on that one so we've yeah. never done a true like we've done horror episodes but we've never done a horror right. like, i don't like, watch scary list. movies yeah. like i like the idea of jaws yeah like, oh jaws yeah so on your throw list like throw like right. man versus nature stuff <laughs> in there yeah. right 
Dark no, Vader. I love that. Yeah. Uh, my kid last night, my son last night at dinner said Scar. He just liked Scar. <laughs> Shit. Uh, he's up there. Yes. Right? Come on now. So, that was the dude, first one uh, I think I ever met. He killed Mufasa, for <laughs> Christ's right. sake. Spoiler yeah. alert. He, oh, yep. he did? <laughs> no yeah, no I need think, to watch that. The first now. villain I ever met on screen, I can't remember his name, but he's going to be at MonsterCon in Concord. He played... Um, he had a big impact on you. No, I mean, <laughs> he did, though, but he was in Warriors. He was the one that did the bottles. Mm. That was my oh, yeah. first introduction to villains. I cannot remember his real name, but uh, yeah, I'm, and it's actually his first ever Comic Con appearance. So, nice. looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. To Michael, the- thank you, thank you, brother. We appreciate everything. Like I said, you know, send us the links to your crowdsourcing yeah, we- and all that stuff. You know, anything that. You know, Look, we're not going to have a huge impact, but anything that we can do to help, man, we're there, yeah, we're yeah. there for I'll, you. I'll okay. get it out there. As soon as we get that uh, promo video done and I get, I pick the crowdsourcing page that I yep. want that's yeah. going to best suit our needs, I will definitely take all the help I can get. So Perfect. I appreciate that, yeah. guys. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for coming on, man. We'll yeah. talk to we'll, you. We'll catch up on more podcast stuff, too. So okay, uh, I'll be sure to leave Saba out of it. I know how much he yeah. knows you. So. Yep. <laughs> me great. I love it. Right. We'll All see the you, bud. With the crimson lips. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you, fellas. Thanks, guys. Later.